Hello and welcome to another Made in China here on the Electrical Channel and finally we're taking a look at an item that I get asked about every single time I make one of these videos. This is the GPD. This is the GPD Plus, the most recent version you can buy. Also I've been told. Okay, so this is the box that comes in and it has a lovely magnetic hinge on the side and inside the box, as you can see, we have this lovely design here. A bit of Chinese writing there. And under this foam cover, we get the machine itself, which has been taken out, obviously. We have a little instruction manual. This one is in Chinese. We've got a decent power brick and a USB micro cable to charge the device and transfer data onto the device as well. But what about the actual device? Well, let's take a look at that. Here it is. Yeah. That's a GPD. Or maybe not. Here it is. <laughs> All right. So as you can see, that is the new Nintendo 3DS. That's a GPD. And this is the original Nintendo 3DS. Now, as you can see, the design is very, very similar. In fact, it's so similar that this is pretty much the exact dimensions of this. Let's just put them on top of each other and you'll see. Look at that, completely covers it. Uncanny, isn't it? I wonder where they got the inspiration from for this machine. <laughs> but if you put it up against a new 3DS, you'll see that the new 3DS is slightly larger. Only ever so slightly though. Okay, now, how about the insides of the machine? Well, let's take a look. Let's open up the GPD. As you can see, we have a lovely screen on here. But is it bigger than the 3DS screen? Well, it seems to be. But don't let that fool you. What they've done is they've actually given it a large black bezel. So the actual screen is smaller than the 3DS one, as you'll see when we power it on. I wonder if there's any power in this 3DS. Nope, the 3DS is absolutely flat. Let's try it with the new 3DS, see if that's got power. Nope, the new 3DS is completely flat as well. But I'll tell you what, I'll just replace the standard 3DS with the new 3DS to give you a better idea. Okay, so there we have the GDP there. And here we have the new 3DS. So as you can see, the new 3DS screen actually goes over in here into the corner. Whereas the GPD screen, if you can get it to come back on, come back on please, only goes to this far. The rest of it is just a black bezel. All right, so the cheating a little bit on the screen size, it makes it look like it's bigger than it actually is. But it is a touch screen, as you can see, and a fairly good touch screen at that. It's very responsive. Not only is it a responsive touch screen, but it has a really nice viewing angle on it, and it's quite bright. Definitely, they didn't skimp on the screen. The screen is pretty high quality. Okay, but how about the rest of the machine? Well, let's take a look. So on the front of the system, you can see we've got the two analog controllers here. They feel really good and are extremely responsive. Then we have the D-pad here. Again, not bad at all. It's fairly responsive and you can do special moves on fighting games with it. We have the face buttons, only four face on, but again, fairly good quality. Start and select here. We've got a home button because this is an Android device and a back button. Up here we've got the volume controls, power button, menu button, and a special button to toggle on-screen controls to physical controls. Very useful. And then we have some extra buttons here, L3 and R3. Okay. Two stereo speakers at the front, which are pretty good. Let's take a look around the back. Okay, here you can see we've got some trigger buttons. L and R1 here and LNR2 here. We've also got a couple of inputs. There's our HDMI out, our micro USB 
charging socket there. We've got a dedicated headphone out here and a micro SD card slot. I've used up to a 32GB card on it without any problems. Okay, so how is this machine for emulation? Because that's why you'd buy a machine like this. Well, it's Android, isn't it? And emulation on Android is extremely good. But it also depends on how powerful your Android device is. Is this powerful enough to run Dreamcast? Is it powerful enough to run Nintendo 64? Let's take a look. So upon switching on the machine, this is what you're given. Now this particular model that I have came with RetroArch built in and PPSSPP. It also came with N64, Super Famicom, Dreamcast and PlayStation 1 emulators. But it didn't come with any Nintendo DS or GBA or Sega Saturn or any emulators like that. Those I had to load myself through RetroArch. Now it also came with these built in Android games including the Fortnite installer. Unfortunately, Fortnite won't work on this because this device is not running a version of um, Android new enough to run Fortnite, so that's a bit of a shame. It also came with a lot of apps as well. PUBG Mobile I installed myself for some reason. It's in the app section. i got to move that. But you got YouTube and all that. And it even has the Play Store, believe it or not, up here. And it works. And we have our general settings, including game bad settings and so on. Nothing too special there. Okay, now what you all want to know is how good is the emulation on this device. Well, I can say straight away, keep away from Happy Chick. It's useless. It's basically just a load of knockoff emulators. They don't work very well. Go with RetroArch. Or check out some of the built-in emulators here. You can also see that you can connect a USB control pad for two-player action. All these were installed on the machine when I got it. N64 as well, all these were pre-installed. Super Famicom, all pre-installed. Well, maybe not these ones here. I installed those. That's why there's no pictures. Dreamcast, it came with WWE pre-installed. And believe it or not, it actually runs. absolutely no idea what I'm doing here. Okay. So from seeing this, you probably think that all Dreamcast games are going to run perfectly fine. Well, not so. Just press the home button there, go back to the home. Now these are play, uh, Dreamcast games I installed. Here's Trigger Heart Exelia. Oh, maybe we've got to um, actually cancel out of that. Okay, let's try it now. So as you can see, it boots. And I think this is a GDI file. And see, we get to the loading screen. We've got all the memory card warnings and so on. By the way, that looks razor sharp on this screen. It looks really good. Okay, well, it seems to be working perfectly fine this time. When I tried this yesterday, it didn't work. <laughs> it just crashed when the game started. Ah, there we go. <laughs> it crashed. Okay. So not all Dreamcast games work. Uh, let's try a bit of Street Fighter over here. Let's see if that'll work. I think the widescreen option works on this game. There you go. <laughs> it works differently depending on the games. Alright, Street Fighter 3, third strike. As you see, this one's glitched as well. Now, to be fair, that could be a bad ROM or something, but... Um, I don't think it is because I did play this on my actual Dreamcast and it worked just fine. Now it's possible that you could download a different Dreamcast emulator uh, via Retro Arch and that would work absolutely perfectly. This is using the built-in emulator. So I like to show you what you know what you get out of the box. 
I mean, speed-wise, it's not a problem. It's smooth. It's running 60 frames per second. It's just glitched. Okay, let's exit that. Let's try Le Mans 24 hours. Okay, so the video section works for the game logo, or the company logo, but how about the actual in-game? No, it crashed. Okay, so as you can see, the built-in emulator that you get with the machine for Dreamcast isn't that good. But that's not saying this will not emulate Dreamcast well. You just have to download a better Dreamcast emulator. Now, the main thing I like to do on my uh, show is show you the out-of-box experience. What you can expect to get when you buy the machine without messing about with all sorts of downloads and so on. All right, let's take a look at the PlayStation emulator running. Now, PlayStation 1 games run absolutely perfect on this machine. As you can see here from the 3D opening of the Raiden, of Raiden project, it's running as smooth as can be. It's exactly the same as running it on a PlayStation. No problems at all. Loading is also the exact same time as a standard PlayStation. They haven't sped that up at all. Alright, so let's start a bit of Raiden 2, or Raiden 2, however you want to pronounce it. Let's see if it runs nice and smooth. Should be 60 frames per second. Although this video is in 4K at 30 frames per second, so you're not really going to notice. You guys just have to take my word for it. Alright, where we go. There's fire. Yeah, it's perfect. Smooth as can be. Smooth as butter. 60 frames per second without a doubt. So I'm using the D-pad here, as you can see. I can't see because my fingers are in the way. But you can also use the analog nub as well. Of course, playing this in hand is much easier than playing it on a table. Alright, so to exit the emulator you just press the home button there, like on any Android device, and it goes straight back to the uh, front end. Okay, Nintendo 64, how is that going to run? Will that run well or will it run bad? Alright, so as you can see, here's Mario Kart 64. I was playing this yesterday and it works like a dream. Lovely. Unfortunately, my uh, buff attack buttons are on the back here. It's going to be a bit awkward getting to those. Never mind. Now, one game that does kind of make uh, Nintendo 64 emulation chug quite a bit is Conker's Bad Fur Day. So, um, maybe we should boot that up and see how the GPD handles that. Okay, here we are with Conker's Bad Fur Day running, and as you can see, it seems to be handling it fairly well. Normally this well, game chugs really badly. Here I am. Conker the King. King of all the land. Who'd have thought that? But how did I come to this, I hear you say? And who are those strange fellows that surround my throne? Okay, let's jump into the actual game and see how that handles. Okay, so here we are in game, and as you can see, it's working reasonably well. I mean, it's super smooth. It does seem to be a little bit stuttering here and there, but um, yeah, I mean, it's definitely playable. Graphic glitches here. Who are you? Oh, hello. Can you help me? I, I need to get home and go to bed because I don't feel very well at all. Okay, let's take a look at PSP running. Okay, so I must stress that we're actually running this with stock emulator settings. Nothing's been tweaked, nothing has been altered. This is how it is out of the box. So as you can see, it's running the full motion video part just fine. That's to be expected. No problems there. Let's get into the actual game. Press start.
Okay, arcade battle. Pick anyone, I haven't got a clue who anybody is on this game. No, pick Anna. <laughs> Why not? Get ready for the next one. Bob, me he's an ample fellow, isn't he? <laughs> Round one. Fight. Alright. Seems to be running full speed. There is a little bit of stuttering, but I think that could be easily fixed with some slight tweaking of the emulator settings. You win. Round two. Fight. As standard though, it seems to be pretty smooth. Alright. So it seems to run PSP just fine. Not 100% perfect out of the box, but I think if you tweak those settings a little bit, we should get much better results. All right, so let's check out Retro Arch. Now Retro Arch comes with absolutely no cores. I had to download all these cores separately, but that's not a problem because you can download them from within this uh, application. Okay, so I've got quite a few cores already built into this. Now let's take a look. So we've got 3DO, a couple of arcade cores there. We've got Jaguar Core, uh, Tori Lynx, Cannonball, that's a uh, outrun widescreen. Very nice. Game Boy, Nintendo DS, PC and Super Graphics, blah, blah, blah. Loads of different cores, including the Sega Saturn Core. Now, is this device powerful enough to run Sega Saturn games? I think we all know the answer to that one, don't we? No, it isn't. But uh, let's take a look and see how well it does run Sega Saturn games. We shouldn't expect it to run Sega Saturn games very well because, uh, to be honest, Sega Saturn emulation is extremely difficult. Okay, we can see straight away, or well, try and see straight away. That's not run the video, is it? The video is a bit choppy. How about the actual game? The game is not even loading up. Okay, it seems to have crashed just after. Oh, here we go. <laughs> that is so slow, it's beyond belief. All right, let's just get out of that. Um, how do we get out? Ah, well, whatever. I can tell you for the fact that this doesn't run Sega Saturn games. It just runs them really, really poorly. Uh, I've been playing with this for a couple of weeks now. And no matter what I tried on the Sega Saturn, it just looked like that. <laughs> Absolutely terrible. So it doesn't play Sega Saturn, which is uh, no surprise. All right. But um, it does play other machines. Uh, so let's take a look at what other cores we can load up. Let's load the core up. Hmm... Okay, here we go with the PC Engine core loaded up and I'm going to load a PC Engine Super Graphics game and see if it'll play that. Darius Plus. Uh, yeah, we'll go with that, please. As you can see, no problem. Let's just get rid of all those on-screen controls. So what you do is you press the little control pad button here and it brings up a whole new menu and from here you can customize any control you want with on-screen controls. So let's bring the on-screen controls back. Let's give it that first. The okay, on-screen controls are here. And then what we do is we uh, basically map our buttons to the on-screen control buttons, if I can get my finger on that one. There we go. I don't know how precisely you have to put them on there, but uh, we'll soon find out. There we go. And uh, we'll just uh, save that. Move that over here a little bit. Let's see if that's gonna work. I don't know if we've got to save it first. We might have to save it first, okay. Normal. Uh, save, okay. Here we go. And we can get rid of those on-screen controls now. 
Hang on, well, oh, we've got to keep the on-screen controls on. Oh, man. <laughs> that means we've got to go into the options and actually fade those on-screen controls out. But as you can see, the... Uh, oh, I'm dead. <laughs> as you can see, the D-pad was working there. It's very easy to configure the controls on this thing. In fact, it's so easy, I actually configured them to PUBG. So let's take a look at PUBG running on this. PUBG is hiding in the app section. Let's start it up. Now we're running this on the stock settings. So we're not running on ultra high settings or anything like that. Just the basic settings, uh, standard settings. Um, and you know, it looks reasonably well and it runs, you know, fairly well as well. So um, it's a lot of wells in there, isn't there? So I mean, it's playable for sure. So here we are in the lobby and as you can see I'm using the analog stick here to move around. I've got my ducks, I've got my punches and everything all set up. I've got my other analog stick set up as well. Oh, is that it? Are we going into a game here? Let's go in there, bash somebody while I'm waiting. Hello, I've got no clothes on. Nice to meet you. What the hell's going on there? Come on, let's get into a game. Okay, we're starting in nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and zero. Let's load up. All right, so the volume is quite low on this game, so we'll turn that up a little bit. Okay, so as you can see, the level of detail on the graphics there isn't that bad. I mean, we're not running on ultra high settings, as I said, but you know, we're certainly not running on super low settings either. All right, let's get out. Oh, I can't remember what I guess I jumped to. <laughs> uh, we'll just uh, use the uh, touch screen controls there. All right, let's get down to the ground as fast as possible. Let's show you the graphics. All right, so I didn't configure a parachute button. We'll jump cut this because it takes a while before I get down to the ground. Okay, we're nearly on the ground. Hey, there we go. All right, we're on the ground. And as you can see, smooth enough. <laughs> the jerk's around. All right, let's see. Let's go and get some stuff. There uh, must be some stuff upstairs. Let's go and have a look. Here we go. All right, let's get that. Thank you. All right, get up. That's my jump. All right, let's see. Where's my guns? Got to get a gun. Whoop. There we, there we go. Right, let's see if my gun's working. Let's jump. Oh, I think I put gun down as one of the LNR triggers, haven't I? There we go. I knew I put the guns on somewhere. <laughs> so yeah, as you can see, this machine is very good for playing games like this, you know, mobile games with actual physical controls. Now, did I, uh, did I map the car controls? No, I can't use that car anyway. Okay, well, how about doing some online activities, such as watching YouTube? Does YouTube work pretty well on this? Of course it does. Let's, ooh, there we go. We've got a bit of tech moan there. Let's load up a bit of tech moan. As you can see, perfectly fine. Really fast, not a problem. And we are currently running this in what resolution? Digital audio tape. All right, let's knock that up to 720p, which is the highest this machine will run things at. And yeah, there you go. It's running that 720p, no problem whatsoever. Let's just make sure it is. Yes, it is. All right. Okay, so yeah, you can see it loads up YouTube very quickly. You can also control it using the uh, on screen controls and so on the physical buttons as well. Okay. Um, 
So yep, YouTube not a problem, and with this being Android, if we want to, we can go straight back into our game. Here we go. Yay! How about that for best style? Not a problem. Alright. Okay, how about taking a look at the internet? Again, not a problem. Load up Chrome. We can uh, search for anything. I know, favorite group as always. Put that in. Pet Shop Boys. Here we go. New single by them just came out, by the way. Yep, Pet Shop Boys UK. Let's see how quick I'll load that up. Bit of a heavy site because it has lots of pictures and videos and stuff on it. Here you go. No problem. So, yeah. Running this thing as an internet browser, not a problem at all. Just like an Android phone. And there we have it. That is the GDP XD Plus. And I must give a big shout out to Tom Top for sending this over to me. Uh, otherwise, I never would have got one because they are pretty expensive. But now that I do have one, I can honestly say that they are very good machines. They're well built. They got great touch screens on them. They're fantastic for you know using as a media player, surfing the web, watching YouTube, things like that. And as a games machine, very, very, very good. Plays all the old 8-bit, 16-bit stuff. It'll play the 32-bit stuff, uh, PlayStation, PSP, pretty well. Um, PlayStation is pretty much perfect, actually. Sega Saturn, yeah, not to, ex not to be expected, actually. Um, but yeah, it can play Nintendo 64, some Dreamcast stuff as well. And um, with Retro Arch on there, you can do things like Jaguar 3DO, um, loads of arcade stuff, things like that. It's not going to play everything under the sun, but it plays a lot, and it plays a lot really well. Um, so yeah, I am impressed with this machine. It's a great little Android-based emulation multimedia device with very good controls. So um, I'm actually going to put a couple of links in the video description down below. Uh, Tom Top are currently selling this with a, a $10 discount. So with the discount and the current sale price, it's going for about $189. Um, you know, by the time you watch the video, that might have changed. But as of this video going live, that's how much it costs. So yeah, a big thumbs up from me. I am actually very happy that I do have a GDP in my collection now.